everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. So today we're talking about the axis of symmetry. And when we say axis of symmetry, this is almost, I don't know, it has sort of an epic name to it. Like expect to have some sort of rock band named axis of symmetry. I digress, but unfortunately it is nothing quite that cool. What it is instead is when we're talking about a parabola, either looks something like that or that is our general shape of a parabola and we are referring to a straight line that if we draw it and draw it that sounded strange if we draw it and we assume that this parabola is better drawn than the one I just drew how many times can I say draw in 30 seconds that if we drew a line straight down the middle of it that it would perfectly cut this in half. So that's our idea. We want this to split this parabola into two symmetrical, hey, axis of symmetry, we have a title, two symmetrical sides of this parabola. Now, usually when we find an axis of symmetry, we're not starting with this picture. I think having a graph, having the picture of the parabola is important to let you see what's going on but most likely they're gonna give you an equation instead. So here's our first example. I'm gonna start with x squared plus three x minus four equals y. Now, if I were to graph this, it's going to look something like this, and I am certainly not drawing it to scale. That's really poor. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give it one more shot. Oh, wow. That's, that's just sad. Let's see if I can do it this way. Oh, that's pathetic. That is, I apologize <laughs> to everyone's eyes who are assaulted by that sorry excuse for a parabola. We'll pretend that didn't just happen and that it is a beautiful parabola you see there in front of you. Now, if I was asked to find the axis of symmetry, where is the you know, where is this line? First off, what formula or what format is this uh, axis of symmetry going to be in? Well, I keep showing you this vertical line here. That is a big, big clue. It is going to be a vertical line. Always for a parabola, a function parabola, axis of symmetry, it's always going to be a vertical line. And ver <laughs> vertical lines always have the formula of x equals and a number, nothing else to them. X equals a number, and that's our vertical line. Now the formula you're going to see in your math book looks like this, X equals negative B over two A. And if you just looked at that B and A and went, wait a minute, B and A, where is that coming from? I don't see any Bs and As. That is completely understandable reaction. Now, if in your math class, you've already seen the quadratic formula, this is where this comes back into play. If you haven't seen it yet, it just depends on your math book and your teacher. I'm gonna go over it just to make sure we're all on the same page. So this B and A are coming from when we're looking at quadratics and they say it's AX squared plus BX plus C. So what they're meaning here is the constant or number that's in front of the X squared is also called A constant or number that's attached to the X is also called B and the number that's off hanging by itself is called C. Now there might not be a BX or a C in your equation. If it's a quadratic, there will always be an X squared. Now in this case up here, when you don't see a number in front of the X squared, that is an invisible one. That's very important. Remember that if you see a negative X squared, then that is an invisible negative one. If you don't see that number, that's what you're going to use. So let's use this equation, x equals negative b over 2a, and let's find our b and a from in this quadratic. So first, we, so we said the constant or number that's attached to the x is our b. So here it would be a positive 3. So I'm going to erase that b and replace it with a positive 3. And I'm going to put it in parentheses just to really highlight that that negative is out by its lonesome. Whatever is up here, positive or negative, you're gonna stick in for that B and then make it negative, okay? That's key. 
Don't fall into the trap of, say, if this were a negative 3 and going, oh, so negative B over 2A, and I've got a negative 3, so on top I'm going to have a negative 3. No! No, 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 that's not what we want. We want to make sure we'd be putting in that particular case, if this had been a negative 3X, then our negative B over 2A, that would be a negative negative 3. That can be a little confusing sometimes, which is why I will put these little parentheses to remind us that that negative is outside and separate from the B. Then on bottom, I have 2 times A. A, as I said, is the invisible 1. So 2 times 1. All right, so negative 3 on top and 2 times 1, or 2 on the bottom. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3 halves, and that almost looks like a v, but that's supposed to be an x. So x equals negative 3 halves, or negative 1 and a half, which means it should be somewhere right around, yeah, pretty close, that's not exact, but pretty close <laughs> to there. And hey, my parabola, when it has that axis of symmetry, almost looks half decent. Almost. Who am I kidding? It looks bad. So again, negative b over 2a. And you're not always going to have that graph. In fact, it's really unlikely that you're going to have a graph. That's really just, um, I would like to show you what the axis means. It's far, far more likely that you're just going to be given an equation and have them ask you, what is the axis of symmetry? There's just a couple of things I want you to be on the lookout for. I'm going to show them to you real quick. So here's our first one. Let's say I had 3x squared minus 5x plus 7. And again, our formula is x equals negative b over 2a. So what is my b? It is negative 5. That negative goes with it. This is key. So down here, that negative that's here, that's part of that equation. I mentioned it before. I'm saying it again. This negative that's, here, that's up here is attached to that 5, so all that comes down. On the bottom, 2 times a. My a is this 3, so it's 2 times 3. Negative negative 5 on top is 5. 2 times 3 is 6. So x equals 5 sixths would be my axis of symmetry here. Be so careful with that negative. It's more like the opposite of B. That may help to remember, the opposite of B. So this is a negative 5. My final answer is going to be a positive 5. If this were a positive 5, my final answer would be a negative 5. It's the opposite of B is going to be on top. The other situation that they love to throw these little, the oddball ones, the ones that are a little different, they love to throw those at you. And one that's pretty common is when you see something like this. There is no B. <laughs> There is no x term in the middle. And you go, know, wait, how do I do this if there's no b? Well, there is. We just can't see it. This would be the same as saying 0 x's plus 8. There are no x's. There are 0 x's. b would be 0 in this case. Since we cannot take a negative of 0 or an opposite of 0, the top is just 0. On the bottom, 2 times a, my a is 4, so 2 times 4, 0 over 8, or 0. All right, so this is something to memorize, x equals negative b over 2a. Stick it in your memory, tuck it away, it will come back in other problems. It is a helpful thing to know, it's very good to know. And again, just pay really close attention to this negative on top, be careful, you're doing the opposite of that central B, and then you'll have your answer. If this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.